Hello Computational Thinking students. In this tutorial, we will see some pseudocodes based on fundamentals of programming. This is the outline of this tutorial. We will see different types of filtering blocks followed by two types of iterations, then procedures and difference between return and exit statement. Find the number of students based on their total marks. We will use this problem statement to illustrate the different filtering blocks. In this example, we are iterating over the pile of cards from scores dataset. If the filtering condition which is x dot total greater than 220 is true, then variable a will be incremented. Variable a is initialized to 0 because we are counting the number of students and counting always start from zero. But here we are missing out on the count of students who have not scored above 220. In order to accommodate that count, we will have to add the else block. Now in this second pseudocode, we have retained the original code and added the else block which will execute when if condition is false. Hence, variable b which is initialized to 0 will give us the count of students who have scored less than or equal to 220. But still, this approach will not work if we want to divide students in more than two categories. In such a case, we will have to add few more if blocks and create a ladder of such filtering conditions. In this third pseudocode, we are counting the number of students based on their total marks in four different categories. In this third pseudocode, we are counting the number of students based on their total marks in four different categories. Variable A will count the number of students who have scored 250 or more marks. Now the second if condition which checks if the total marks are greater than 220 or not is interesting because it will execute irrespective of the outcome of the first if condition. Therefore, Variable B will count all such students who have scored more than 220. Similar thing will happen with third condition as well. It will count the number of students who have scored more than 200. And the remaining students count will be consolidated in variable D. Here. Multiple if statements are followed by each other and then else block at the end. This kind of implementation is referred as if else ladder. Sometimes if if else and if else ladder is not sufficient to solve all the problems. For example, let's consider this problem statement. Find the number of students based on their total marks and CT. Here also we require those if else blocks to count the number of students, but such a counting will happen only when CT town condition is satisfied. Therefore, we have to place those if else blocks inside another if else and such a structure is called nested if else. Now we will see an example of pseudocode consisting of multiple non-nested iterations. Let's consider this problem statement. Find the number of students above average based on their total marks. Here first we have to compute the average total marks which requires an iteration. And then the computed result has to be compared against each card in pile. 
which requires another iteration. Based on this example, we can say multiple non-nested iterations are required when the computation of second iteration is dependent on the result computed in the first iteration. Next concept is nested iterations, which refers to the process where one iterator runs inside the other iterator. Let's consider this example. Find the number of pairs of students who scored same marks in mathematics. For the purpose of demonstration of this pseudocode, consider the given table 1 consisting of marks of 6 students. As per the given pseudocode, we will iterate over table 1. Hence, variable x will hold the highlighted row from table 1. Once that row is moved to table 2, then because of the nested iteration, variable y will hold the updated top row of table 1. Then we will compare the mathematics marks from variables x and y. If they are equal, then we will increment variable pairs. After this, we will move the contents of variable y to table 3 and start the inner iteration again. Now, the variable y will hold the new top row from table 1, which will be compared against variable x. After that, variable y will be moved to table 3 and inner iteration will start. Once again, because of the inner iteration, variable y will point to the new top row from table 1. And the same process will continue while the table 1 has more rows. At this point, inner iteration will stop and all the rows from table 3 will be moved back to table 1 in order to restart the outer iteration. Once again, the same process will continue with the updated value of variable x, which is highlighted row from table 1. Just like previous time, the row will be moved to table 2 and we will read the new top row of table 1 as y. This entire process will continue while table 1 has more rows. Next topic is procedures. Let's consider this problem statement to illustrate the importance of procedures. The given pseudocode finds the subject toppers of mathematics, physics, and chemistry. But if we observe carefully, then we can easily notice that the same code with different subjects is there in those three while loops. Therefore, it can be converted into a procedure with subject name as a parameter like shown here. In terms of procedures, there are two important components. One procedure call, which is shown in highlighted text, and second is called procedure definition, written in red color. These are the advantages of procedures. It avoids the repetition or duplication of the code. It also divides the complex problem into smaller and simpler problems. Procedures make modifications easier because we have to make the change only once in the procedure definition instead of changing it everywhere. Now the last part of this tutorial is the difference between return and exit loop. These two statements may look similar but there is a critical difference when it comes to the execution of these statements. Let's explore those differences. Written statement has to be used in a procedure 
whereas exit loop can be used in any loop and such a loop may or may not be in a procedure return statement terminates the procedure execution and flow of control goes back to the procedure call whereas exit loop statement terminates the only loop from which the statement has been called and then the rest of the code continues with its execution now let's see how return and exit loop works using the given pseudo codes for example consider the given pseudo code with return statement to check whether the entered number is an even number we will call the procedure is even and pass the number as a parameter the percent symbol is called modulo operator which returns the remainder after the division operation therefore we are checking the n mod 2 which will be zero if it is an even number in such a case procedure will return true and stop its execution the flow of control will go back to the procedure call and variable a will store boolean value true if the modulo operator does not return zero then the if condition will evaluate to false and then the next return statement will return boolean value false this will also stop the procedure execution and transfer the control back to the procedure call the variable a will be assigned with boolean value false on the other hand exit loop pseudo code will stop only the inner loop iteration when i is equal to j let's see the detailed execution flow of this pseudo code right hand side table represents outer and inner iterations along with all the variables used in this pseudo code in case of first outer iteration variables i and j are equal which will trigger the exit loop statement and it will stop the execution of the inner loop but the outer loop will continue same thing will happen when both the variables i and j are equal to 2 and then equal to 3 in the last iteration thank you for watching this tutorial happy learning